Chapter 73, The Chase Rico One was standing in the great meadow. He stared up at the smoking hill of ash and then down at the stampede of footprints around it. There had been a large bonfire with hundreds of animals and one robot. But why? The Rico couldn't make sense of what he was seeing. After thoroughly exploring the site, he continued through the meadow and into the forest. It was around that time that he lost communication with Rico III, then Rico II, and he knew that his partners had both been destroyed. Rico I would have to hunt down the target by himself. The hunter marched on. His blocky head swiveled from side to side, scanning for any sign of Roz. He was soon gazing across the glassy surface of a beaver pond. On the far side, a thread of smoke drifted up from another of those wooden domes. With his powerful legs, the robot launched himself up through the air, soaring in a high, graceful arc over the pond and down to the other side. His heavy feet slammed into the ground, leaving deep craters in the garden by the dome. He, locked, he hunched over and looked inside, fur and feathers and the dying coals of a fire, but the target wasn't in there. The Rico stood perfectly still and watched as a soft rain started dripping down through the tears of the forest, and then he sensed it. Up in the canopy was something that didn't belong. Roz had been spotted. The hunter watched his target drop from branch to branch down to the forest floor. Then she bounded away through the thickly tangled underbrush without stirring a leaf, without snapping a twig, and vanished into the green. However, Rika One had other means of tracking her. He could sense her electronic signal. The signal was gliding around the edge of the pond, but it was fading fast a few more seconds and he would lose it entirely. Rico One burst into a sprint. The forest seemed to sway and quake from his stomping strides. And a minute later, the forest really did begin to move. Trees were toppling down onto the Rico. He fired his rifle and two toppling trees turned to ash. But then a third swung down through the smoke and hammered his body into the ground. Rico One shoved the tree aside, pulled himself up, and continued the hunt. He didn't notice the beavers diving back into the pond. Rico One tore through brambles and leaped over boulders, and suddenly the ground was caving beneath him. Down he fell into a deep pit, crashing against the bottom and twisting his leg. The robot violently pounded his leg back into shape. Then he launched himself up and out from the pit. He didn't notice the groundhogs watching from their tunnels. The hunter faced one trap after another. He was pelted with flaming pine cones and tripped by taunt vines and crunched by tumbling rocks. The hunter now limped and rattled and was covered in scars, but he kept going. Roz galloped back and forth across the island again and again as she tried to lose Rico One. But no matter how fast she ran or how well she hid or how many animals helped, she couldn't escape the sound of the hunter's stomping footsteps. She had never ran, run so hard for so long, and while her mechanical body was holding up, her wooden foot was not. After hours of relentless pounding, it finally gave out. She was galloping through the rocky forest by the sea cliffs when her foot splintered apart. As soon as Rico One found the fresh wooden splinters, he knew his target was in trouble. He stomped out from the trees onto the clifftop and scanned the coastline below. Geese were flying down through the drizzle. Otters were wiggling over rocks. Seaweed and driftwood and broken robot parts were scattered about the shore. But the hunter also sensed a very faint electronic signal. 
Roz was down there somewhere. The hunter's blocky hand clamped onto the clifftop and then thwip, it detached. The hand was connected to a strong cable that spooled out from the end of his arm. He gave the t cable two quick tugs and then he stepped off the ledge. Rico one zipped down the cliffside, one arm releasing cable, the other clutching his rifle, and he slowed to a gentle stop just as he reached the ground. Then, high above, the robot's hand unclamped and followed the cable all the way down until thwip, it snapped right back onto the end of his arm. Geese squawked and otter squeaked as Rico One marched through the robot gravesite. The place was littered with torsos and limbs and heads. They were all valuable parts, but he would collect them later. For now, his only concern was finding Roz. He followed the electronic signal over to a clump of seaweed. But where was his target? Was Rico One's sensors malfunctioning? The robot tapped his head a few times, but the mysterious signal remained. He looked around for any signs of her. And as he did, the clump of seaweed reached up and grasp his rifle. Um, chapter 74, The Click. Four robot hands were clamped around the rifle. Rico One loomed above. Roz lay below, camouflaged in seaweed. For a moment, all was still. And then the hunter suddenly lurched and twisted as he tried to rip the rifle away from his target. But Roz held on. Seaweed fell from her body as she was lifted right off the ground. Her legs dangled in the air until she pounded a foot against a stump against the hunter's broad chest, leaned back, and pulled on the rifle with all her strength. Waves crashed as the robots grappled for the weapon, but Roz was no match for Rico One. The hunter was too big and too brutal. Roz could feel her body being pulled apart, but she could also feel the rifle being pulled apart. A faint glow appeared between her hands. The glow grew brighter and brighter, and then a blinding explosion launched the robots in opposite directions. When the smoke cleared, shards of the rifle were everywhere. Rico One's body was pocketed with holes and one arm was charred and crippled. Roz's arms and legs had been blown completely off. She was now just a torso and a head. Inside her computer brain, our robot survival instincts were blaring. Her battered body simply could not take any more damage. Clearly, Roz was not designed for combat, but the Rico was. He pulled himself to his feet and hobbled toward his target. Roz wanted to get up and run away, but without arms and legs, our robot couldn't move. She could only speak. Please do not deactivate me, she said. Rico One ignored her. His blocky hand reached past her face and touched the back of her head. Click. Chapter 75, The Last Rifle. With the target deactivated, Rico One calmly moved on to the next phase of his mission. He limped through the gravesite and began collecting every single robot part. He splashed into the shallows and returned with a foot. He shook the sand from a cracked torso. He pulled a head out from a tide pool. Each part was then piled around Raza's lifeless body. Bright Bill watched in horror as his mother slowly disappeared under a pile of parts. Roz looked just like the dead robots, but she wasn't dead. She had simply been shut down. Don't do it, Bright Bill. The flock tried to stop their leader, 
It's too dangerous. But the goose was determined to bring his poor mother back to life. Bright Bill crouched low to the ground and slowly moved toward the pile of robots. And when Rico One limped away to collect another part, Bright Bill sprinted over the rocks, pushed past arms and legs, and squeezed into the pile. Click! A muffled voice echoed across the shore. Hello, I am Rosam, Unit 137134, but you can call me Roz. Brightville hugged his mother's face as her computer vein rebooted, rebooted. Mama, wake up. What happened, she said finally. Where is Rico? He's coming this way. What were you thinking, Bright Bill? You must leave now before he kills us both. I was scared, Mama, cried the goose. I didn't know what to do. Heavy footsteps stomped toward them. Robot parts were knocked aside, and then Rico One looked down with his glowing eyes. Bright Bill tried to squirm away, but thick fingers locked around him like a cage. Mama, help, cried Bill. Bright Bill, as he was pulled up from the pile. Please do not hurt my son, begged Roz. He is harmless. Rico One paid no attention to Roz. He just held the, up the goose in his giant hand, ready to crush the life out of him. Mist swirled in the breeze, waves sloshed against the rocks, seagulls circled above. No, not seagulls, vultures, and one of them clutched something silver in his talons. The vulture spiraled down, and Rico's three's rifle clattered onto the shore. Geese and otters quickly surrounded the rifle. They squawked and squeaked and fumbled with the weapon, trying to aim the clunky thing. The hunter was confused. How had those animals gotten a rifle, and how could they possibly know how to fire it? They did know. The geese had seen a trigger press before. A beam of light briefly flashed through the gloom. At first, it seemed as if nothing had happened. But a moment later, Rico's one's chest began glowing a brilliant orange, and then it was melting and oozing down his front, and soon there was a wide, gaping hole in the middle of his torso. His hands suddenly unclenched, and Bright Bill fluttered away. Seaweed sprayed over the gravesite, and steam hissed up from Rico's scorching hot guts. He shook and twitched and collapsed beside Roz. Rico One turned his face to Roz and spoke in a quiet, garbled voice. More Rico's will come for you. And if you d destroy them, still more will come. The makers will not rest until all missing robots have b b been retrieved. When? When will they come, said Roz. How long do we have? You can still be fixed, Roz. Go to the airstrip. Bring all the robot parts with you. The ship knows what to do. His voice was silent. His eyes went dark. Rico One was dead. Chapter 76, The Broken Robot. Geese and otters were bustling all around Roz. They were pulling arms and legs out from the robot pile and pressing them against her body. They were hoping to hear thwip sounds and that the robot's limbs would snap right into place and Roz would return to her old self and life on the island would go back to normal. But nothing happened. No matter what they did, 
the limbs wouldn't attach. Our robot's body was too badly damaged. I'm sorry, Ma, said Bright Bill, his voice trembling. I thought this would work. It is okay, son, said Roz calmly. I am, I am lucky I can still think and speak. The animals tried to smile at their poor friend, but they couldn't hide their sadness. Roz was a mangled wreck, and there was nothing they could do to fix her. The robot wanted to be strong for her son and her friends. She wanted to ease their worried minds and tell them everything would be fine. But Roz knew that everything would not be fine. She looked down at her broken body, and then she looked up at the geese and the otters and said, I will need some help getting home.